11 in a row in a series and actually is tied at 33 wins apiece overall. South Carolina coming in off a win on the road at Maryland a week ago. Clemson, as I mentioned, 3-0. Their last win against Richmond as they get set to tip this one off. And the tip immediately gets into the hands of Boston. Around the rim it goes. Watch the South Carolina team work the offensive glass. They did get themselves the ball back, but not another opportunity now. We get to see Clemson on offense. That was great defense by Hannah Hank. Had a little bit of a miscommunication on that jump ball. Thought Aaliyah Boston was going to have a runaway, but a good recovery by Clemson defensively. Drive to the basket by Nunu Bradford who has been terrific rebounding the ball. She gives her team another shot, and Amari Robinson drains the three. Second chance points are going to be the story of this game. Can Clemson capitalize on the flip side? South Carolina averages 22 second chance points a game. Clemson has to find a way to slow that down. A lot of familiar faces in that starting five for South Carolina, other than the one who just scored. Kiara Fletcher makes her first start in a South Carolina uniform. She's come off the bench. The first two games transfer from Georgia Tech. Missed all of last season, though, with injury. Here's Hank in the corner. We said Clemson is going to have to make threes. They're one for two so far. They know that's where they have an advantage over South Carolina. They have to be able to exploit that. Amanda Butler's message to her team at shoot around earlier today was it has to be about us. It has been about the Tigers so far, making it tough for South Carolina on both ends of the floor. Zaya Cook and defensively it is Hannah Hank does commit the blocking foul. Oh, Zaya Cook getting up a little gingerly there after some contact. We'll keep an eye on that. But Amari Robinson, hand down, man down. Aaliyah Boston didn't close out as much on Amari Robinson. She's only one for two on the year, so she's not known as a shooter. But after she knocks down that three, you're probably going to have to close out on her a little stronger throughout this game. Second made three of the season for Robinson as Cook is on the free throw line. She'd made nine of 10 in the first two games, but misses on her first attempt tonight. All the talk has been about Aaliyah Boston, rightfully so. She's the best player in the country, but Zaya Cook, even though she just missed two free throws, has been playing lights out in these first two games for South Carolina, has been their leading scorer so far on the season. Robinson. Calling for it on the inside. Boston, not only the reigning national player of the year, but the national defensive player of the year as well. But Tigers get the bucket. It's a transfer from Elon Reaper Pinion with the points. Clemson being aggressive early. Coach Butler's message to her team in shoot around was it's about us. It's not about them. Everyone in the gym, everyone, the media thinks this game is about South Carolina. But for Clemson, it's about them and what they do well. Hank trying to draw the charge, and instead it's a friendly bounce first points of the game for Boston. I like the no call there. Referees know that teams want to get Aaliyah Boston in foul trouble, and they're going to try to bait her. I do think that was a flop. That was a good no call by the officials. Boston and Cook both got in foul trouble early in this game last year in Columbia. As Cook adds a couple points, puts South Carolina out in front. Don Staley had Bree Hall ready to check in a moment ago. She's since gone back to the bench, maybe keeping a close eye, as you mentioned, on Cook. I love that coaching from Don Staley, and that's something that some coaches wouldn't do. If you send someone to the table, you think, okay, I'm putting them in. My theory is she was going to get Zaya Cook out of the game. Yep. Zaya Cook hits a shot, and Don Staley, as a former player, understands how important rhythm is. If you just make a shot, the last thing you want is to come off the floor. So smart move by Don Staley. This is Alasia Douglas, a junior college transfer, is coming off a great game. 15 points with seven of eight from the floor in the Tigers win against Richmond. Ran into a whole mess of trouble though as both Fletcher and Cook there defensively for South Carolina.
Kayla Elmore coming on the floor for Clemson. Alasia Douglas had a breakout game for the Tigers against Richmond. Scored the ball very well. She's a junior college transfer. Coach Butler is excited about what she brings. When you watch her, she plays really under control, which is what they need at the point guard spot. Shot clock not in her favor in that possession. Couldn't get it off in time. Okay, Jen. What we're about to see is Letitia Ami here, six foot four, playing the point. She is one of the most versatile players in the entire country, has a 6'10 wingspan, can play one through five, can guard one through five. That is just not normal. She brings the ball up the floor. They run her off a quick little screen at the high post, and she posts up and scores. That is unbelievable what you just saw. The versatility, the depth, the size of the South Carolina team, all part of the reason why they remain number one as they were wire to wire last season. Preseason number one for the third straight year. And here's what I'm talking about. Letitia Ami here, she hits. Aaliyah Boston has a great cut and she has literally a foot on Alasia Douglas. So you're gonna give her the ball inside. And last year when Destiny Henderson was out, Ami here played some point guard for the Gamecocks. So that's not a completely new thing, but look at the size on this team. What Don Staley has compiled is incredible with their sheer athleticism and just the length. It's so hard as an offense to go up against this kind of length and on the other side to rebound against them as well. Yeah, me here coming in hot, four quick points, South Carolina leading 10-5. And Clemson find a way to maintain some of that good energy they started the game with. Bradford got a clear lane to the basket. They have to keep attacking. I like that they're shooting some threes because we know that is where their advantage is. But keep South Carolina honest and continue to attack the rim. And when you do, you can look for your shooters off of that. Raven Johnson, redshirt freshman now in running the point. Fletcher went to the bench for South Carolina. Both of those players on minutes restriction coming off injury. Shot sure looking good though for the freshman. Raven Johnson, as you mentioned, Jen, she comes off the bench for the first time this season. Maybe she likes that because she just knocked down a three. She was just shooting 10% from three going into this game. Well, Clemson making a game of it early, but South Carolina flexing their muscle as well. Here's another look at the foul call. I believe they called Hannah Hank for hooking there, which is a point of emphasis for the officials this year. Clemson in a 2-3 zone, trying to play similar to what Maryland did. Coach Butler told us they will play a lot of zone in this game, but they don't want to sag as much as Maryland did. Maryland was sagging off basically every wing except Zaya Cook, and Clemson wants to be more aggressive on the perimeter. Well, this is a foul called against the Tigers. Clemson needs a little more of this. Bradford getting to the basket, trying to hang with number one. Time to puddle Don Staley, her 15th season into this powerhouse that she has created at South Carolina, a couple of national championships and Naismith coach of the year honors to go along with that. She knows the head coach on the other side very well, not just from their time here the last five years with Amanda Butler being at Clemson, but obviously when coach Butler was at Florida, those two facing off in the SEC as well. Off the inbounds, Boston quick to pick it up, but six on the shot clock for the Gamecocks. Bree Beal will pull up from the free throw line and hit. Strong move by Bree Beal. Completely aware of the shot clock, didn't rush it. Knew she had a solid six seconds to make something happen. Gamecocks started one of three, have since made their last six, opening up an eight point lead. Douglas. The kick out, you said Clemson was gonna need to hit threes. Had one early from Amari Robinson. I do like that attack by Clemson, attack the lane, 
which is where they have been somewhat effective getting to the rim, and look for a shooter off of that. Tell you what, this South Carolina team is not afraid to go to the bench, and, and why wouldn't you when you have the depth that Don Staley has at her disposal? Camila Cardozo, another name familiar to ACC fans, ACC Freshman of the Year in 2021 when she was at Syracuse. 6 7, she's now on the floor. Beal, why not try another back to back buckets for the senior? Beal has been shooting the ball well this year. 40% from three coming into this game. She hits that one dribble pull up. She feels like she's in rhythm. They lay off of her a bit. She knocks down the three. Nice shot fake from Robinson to get the lane. When you're going up against 6'7", 6 6'5", 6 6 6 you have to use your shot fakes. Good job by Amari Robinson. Five points in the game for Robinson. She's a leading scorer for the Tigers on the season, averaging just under 16 through the first three games. Amari Robinson giving up about seven inches to Camila Cardozo, and Cardozo loves to block shots, and Amari Robinson knows that. Great use of the pump fake. This is an offensive foul that's been called against Ami here, which maybe is the only way to slow her down, it looks like, so far in this game. Mattiot, again, we're talking height disadvantage. She knows that. She sets her feet. You have to obtain that legal guarding position before the offensive player takes the air, leaves the floor, and that's what Mattiot did. You know, sometimes those big defensive plays have a way of firing up your offense. We'll see if the Tigers can create anything from it. 10 on the shot clock now. Michaela Elmore setting a screen for Bradford. Ott under some pressure. Robinson, the shot fake again. She needed it to get a look, but took too much time. What South Carolina's length can do to you is they make you play east-west. They make you play sideways. They're so hard to get around. So you're really going around the perimeter instead of going north-south to the rim. They're just so difficult, especially when they have all that size on the perimeter against some of Clemson's smaller guards. Raven Johnson mentioned missed all of last season with an injury. Actually had a couple of games played, but wound up redshirting with that early injury. And blocked there by Michaela Elmore. On the break, Bradford for two off the glass. Clemson has to take advantage of when they get stopped. So when they force South Carolina to turn the ball over, you've got to go score and make those easy layups in transition. Cardozo, easy to see above the arms of those Clemson defenders. Shot clock under 10. Inside it goes to Boston, makes it look so easy. Such a strong move by Aaliyah Boston. One thing that she does so well is she makes her move so quickly. Most post players, they catch the ball and they address, they see where the defender is on them. Aaliyah Boston has such a quick first. This is going to be a foul called against Bree Beal. Her first, second team foul of the game. And Owen Yang on the floor for the first time tonight for the Tigers. Whitehorn had difficulty bringing it down, did well just to keep possession. Four points in the game for Boston. Do have a foul in the paint area. My Forsberg calling it against Amari Robinson, her first. And I want to take another look at this foul just to see what they called. I believe they're calling that hook on her left arm. That's a really good call by the official. Sometimes an official will say, look, it's Aaliyah Boston. She's got five inches on the defender. We're going to let them play a little bit. But you got to call the rules. And that time, Amari Robinson hooked her with the left arm. Make the call. Under a minute in our first quarter, South Carolina leading Clemson by nine. Five on the shot clock. In some man-to-man -man in this possession. 
Cardozo not even looking at the basket. Ail the game cocks out, but it's a shot clock violation win for the Clemson defense. That'll be interesting because that, that was one of the few times the Tigers played man in the first quarter and they got a shot clock violation. Coach Butler is inherently a man-to-man -man coach. She wants to play man-to-man. -man. We'll see if we see a little more man-to-man -man in the second quarter. Perpinion with the basketball, four-year starter at Elon. Bradford, A for effort, but couldn't get it around or over both of those Gamecock defenders. Now South Carolina looking for the final shot of the quarter. Tigers in that man-to-man -man again. Whenever you see a man-to-man, -man, you want that high ball screen action, especially with a player like Zaya Cook. She'll take it and make it. Five points in the game for Cook, the leading scorer for the Gamecocks on the season, averaging 17 and a half, knocking down a big three at the end of the quarter. The Gamecocks' leading scorer is Zaya Cook, number one in Garnet. She comes off that ball screen, hits that shot. Gamecocks 10 of 14 from the floor in that first quarter, including a perfect three of three that is from beyond the arc. Scorching hot for the Gamecocks. Clemson, meanwhile, just one three-pointer made so far. That was the first one they took. One for six in the quarter. And Cook picks up where she left off. Seven in the game now for Zai Cook. Zai Cook's release on her shot is very high. She releases at the top of her jump, which is something a lot of female players, frankly, can't do. And so when you're trying to guard Zai Cook, you can be right there in her grill She's just going to elevate above you and score. That's why she's so lethal. Offensive rebound was won by Inyang. Then she threw it away. Bree Hall bring the ball up the floor. Number 23, sophomore for the Gamecocks. Cardozo calling for it. Quickly meets a double team. And then Hall steps out of bounds. Jen, the Tigers back in that man-to-man. -man. That was aggressive defense, a really good double team on Cardozo, forced her to make a tough pass that resulted in a turnover. Michaela Elmore on the floor for the Tigers. Perpignan at the point. She pulls up, leaves it short though. Fletcher looks like she's ready to run. Good idea. In the end, passes it off. It is Ashlyn Watkins, the highly touted freshman out of Columbia, South Carolina. Kiara Fletcher is playing like the Georgia Tech Kiara Fletcher. I think this is who Dawn Staley wanted when she went to the portal and got her out of Georgia Tech. She's been aggressive. She's attacking. She draws two dishes to her star freshman McDonald's All-American Ashlyn Watkins. And a good finish by her. And wasn't it interesting when we talked to Kira earlier today and we asked her, and I said, okay, it may be an obvious question, but why did you want to come to South Carolina? Of course, you think she's going to say something like, well, to win national championships. And I'm sure that was certainly a part of it. But she said, I needed somewhere where I could work on my master's in criminology. And she put that high on her list and wasn't even considering any schools that did not have that as an option. She said she made that clear to schools when she was in the portal. I want to get my master's in criminology. I want to become a federal agent, join the CIA. So really putting the student in student athlete, Jen. And South Carolina, you, you're never lucky when someone gets injured. Kiara Fletcher was injured last year in her first year at South Carolina. She only had one year left. So if she played last year, she wouldn't be eligible this year. With Destiny Henderson leaving, now they have Fletcher. It seems to have worked out well overall for their roster. You take what blessings in disguise you can get with injuries, with the COVID year, with all of it. Turnover by the Gamecocks. That's their sixth of the game. More women's basketball coming your way Sunday right here on ACCN. Kelly and I will be on the call for this one as well. Get a chance to see the Fighting Irish. You've been putting up a lot of points. Huge win against Northwestern in their last game. They'll take on Ball State. That's 4 Eastern on Sunday right here on ACCN and the ESPN app. Whitehorn. We're going to see her 
talk about with some of that energy she had in her debut. 17 points off the bench in her first time in a Clemson uniform. Just one field goal attempt in her last game. Good stop by Elmore. Another big block. She had one earlier as well for Clemson. Hall does get fouled. Two blocks now for Michaela Elmore, doing a great job of getting her hand on the ball without making contact. And she's had to play a good bit in this game so far because starting one of their starting posts, Hannah Hank, has two fouls. So that's been a reason why you've seen a lot of Elmore. And I think she's earning a little more playing time with how she's playing on the defensive end. Free Hall at the free throw line. It's not been a very positive place for the Gamecocks to be thus far. They're all of four from the line to start this game. There's the first one to go down. But when you're three for three from three, you can make up for it a little bit. Come on, that's still not going to make the coach very happy, though. <laughs> got to take Do a little math. Three is worth a lot more than one. <laughs> I'm used to you saying it's more than two, <laughs> but yeah, well, I guess that makes sense as well. Whitehorn did pick up her first personal on that last play. No points in the game yet for Clemson's first ever McDonald's All-American. Nothing doing on that shot. Cook, a two-time honorable mention All-American, gets it over to Hall. No only a Boston on the floor for the Gamecocks at the moment. Me here. Another look to the freshman Watkins who missed the first but makes the second. Four freshman points in the game. Watkins. And that was McDonald's All-American versus McDonald's All-American inside with Watkins and Whitehorn. Watkins does not look like a freshman. She is someone, if you just saw her, you'd think she's been in the program for a couple years. And think about what she's learning, learning from Aaliyah Boston and Ami here and Cardozo and all these players inside as she follows her own miss, grabs that offensive rebound, and continues to be aggressive inside for the Gamecocks. You just cannot overlook is how good they are on the glass. They're rebounding. I, I would say this, Jen, and I, I don't know if I legit have proof, but I think they're the best rebounding program that we've ever seen in women's college basketball. When you look at what they do, just on a year in and year out basis, their offensive rebounding rate they grab basically 50% of their misses. That is incredible. And then their overall rebounding rate, 65% of rebounding opportunities they grab. It's their size, but it's also the culture that Dawn Staley has built. She knows that rebounding is who they are. She knows it creates separation for them. And the great Pat Summit said, rebounding wins championships. And I think Dawn Staley follows that. Well, it is now a 15-0 run for the Gamecocks. For Clemson, they've had some spells, we were just talking about this in the break, of, of really good defense, but no offense, no points to go along with it. Back door for Bradford. And that's what Coach Butler was telling us at Shoot Around. Everyone's worried about how they're gonna stop Aaliyah Boston and stop this team, but the key is you've gotta score. You've gotta be able to score on the other end. And that's how Clemson was going to be able to stay in this game, I think, was shooting the three ball. And South Carolina has shot it better so far. Right on cue, though, Gaines knocks one down for Clemson. Kiki Gaines, the sophomore out of Columbus, Georgia, knocks down a much-needed three for the Tigers, their second in seven attempts. Tigers setting a program record with 14 made threes in their win against Wofford earlier this season. Yeah, a little more of that energy. As the Tigers will celebrate the offensive foul as Boston picks up her first. The Gamecocks have been lights out from beyond the arc. Four for four. Haven't missed one yet. Only came to the game shooting 28%. And then Kiana Gaines, a wide open three, made possible by attacking the lane and kicking out to a wide open shooter. Hannah Hank back on the floor. You mentioned she picked up a couple of early fouls for the Tigers. Bradford around and out. 
Beal. Drive into the basket. That's another charge against the Gamecocks. Douglas drawing the contact. Let's take another look at this. I, I see that's a better angle. From my angle at first, I just thought that Bree Beal kind of euroed around her and that force knocked over Douglas. But when you see that angle, it looks like Douglas really did have position. And I think that was a good call. So again, another good defensive possession for the Tigers. Douglas, the ball in her hands, gives it up to Bradford. Just as no clean look on the inside, at least, for Clemson. Robinson trying the three. Boston, all right, too open. When's the last time she had a look that wide open? Gaines, well, she just made one. Hank in the perfect position for the board. Right place, right time for Hannah Hank. That ball literally fell in her hands. Go back up with it. Beal looking inside for Boston. Dribbled off her fingertips a little, and she recovers well enough to get her own rebound. Get fouled on her putback attempt. And that is Hannah Hanks' third. There, there is no type of defense that can cause South Carolina to not pass the ball into Aaliyah Boston. At one point, it felt like South Carolina just passed into a triple team. But it doesn't matter. It's Aaliyah Boston. She's going to go up and get the ball. She's a great job at high pointing that ball, knowing how to go get it. And then she's either going to draw the foul or she's going to finish. A double double machine, 62 in her career. That's the most amongst active players in the country. Five points so far tonight. Want to tell you about football coming up on ACCN this weekend on noon Eastern on Saturday, seven and three Duke. They've won three in a row. They'll square off against Pitt. And then we cap off with our ACCN primetime matchup, Wake Forest and Syracuse from Winston-Salem. Leah Boston at 6'5", grabbing her own rebound off of a missed free throw. Just shows her ability to rebound in so many different ways. Michaela Elmore committing the foul for the Tigers. Sophomore out of Fostoria, Ohio. Really gotten a lot of talk from her head coach, Amanda Butler, in terms of the improvement she's seen in the offseason getting ready. And Bradford trying to go toe to toe there with Zaya Cook. Felt she had a clean block, but not called that way. Her first personal. This is another example of Zaya Cook just being to, able to elevate and shoot the ball at the top of her jump. So hard to defend. Bradford got some ball. I think she also got some hand. So that's why Zaya Cook is at the free throw line. First made free throw of the evening for Cook. Missed her first two. And shooting 90% first couple of games. And with a little that more foul, like it. And with that foul as well, South Carolina will go to the free throw line with every foul that Clemson commits till the end of this quarter. So something Clemson needs to be aware of. one of the many hard things as is trying to defend that woman right there on the inside. Aaliyah Boston a chance for the and one. But trying to be aggressive against the South Carolina team without giving them too many opportunities at the free throw line. Exactly. Amari Robinson's fronting but the help side just wasn't there. They had Victoria Saxton up at the high post so they brought her out of help side. It's a really good play design. And when you have Aaliyah Boston one-on-one -on -one where you pass over the player that's fronting and then she has a one-on-one -on -one opportunity, that's gonna be a bucket. That's just gonna happen. Three-point play is converted by Boston. Boston came up limping a little bit after that play, so John Staley just wants to make sure she's okay and brings in Cardozo for her. She's talking to the trainer a little bit, but I feel like I just heard her say, I'm fine. 
Well, we had a chance to talk to Aaliyah earlier today. And when you asked her what she wanted from this season, she said to be dominant, to be a leader. Mm -hmm. Well, pretty high goals, but when you are two-time National Player of the Year, three-time All-American, every other award, way too many to list here, I think that's fair. To me, it's her consistency that separates her from everyone else in college basketball, besides maybe Caitlin Clark with how consistent she is. But she just doesn't have an off night. It's not in her vocabulary. It's not something she does. What was it, 28 consecutive double-doubles of her 30 last year? And averaged, got a decent look there. Averaged 15 and 15 in the NCAA tournament. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah, I'd say that accounts for consistency. Wide open look for Saxton. Cardozo, the putback. Cardozo's size is so incredible. That's a situation where In Yang boxed out, but Cardozo just has those inches. It's not an over the back. She's just reaching up and she's not fouling. Her size is so hard to defend on the offensive glass. And don't you feel watching her and her time in South Carolina, I mean, her game has grown. She's always had the size, right? When we saw that at Syracuse ACC Freshman of the Year, but her game has evolved. Well, she goes up against Aaliyah Boston in practice every day. <laughs> That's going to lead to some improvement as well as a me here inside. You've got Ashlyn Watkins, the post play on this team. It may be the greatest assembly of post players that we've seen in the women's game. They're all so versatile. They have great touch around the basket. They're not one trick ponies. They, they can really do it all. And when you take out the unanimous national player of the year and you put in Cardozo, there's really not that much of a drop off. And there are very few teams that have ever had that luxury in this sport. South Carolina calling a timeout. And we will take a quick break as well. Under a minute 30 to go in quarter number two from Clemson. It's bow time. This holiday season, put a bow on it with a big bow box for your family, friends, and neighbors. Because nothing says seasonings greetings like boldly seasoned chicken, fixins, and biscuits. Tonight, order a big bow box and spend less time in the kitchen. It's bow time. So where do you think this pressure is coming from? Everyone. Don't look at me. I'm just here for the mince. Forty-one to sixteen, our score. And even though South Carolina, I think, has clearly been the better team on the floor, it doesn't feel like that, does it? With that big a difference with as well as Clemson has played, especially in the defensive end at times. I think where that comes from, Jen, is that South Carolina, or Clemson has gotten good shots. They just have not knocked them down. They're seven for 27 from the floor. And South Carolina actually has one less shot attempt, but they're 16 of 26. They're shooting 62% from the floor. Both teams are getting good looks. South Carolina is knocking them down. That's the difference. Nine different players have scored for the Gamecocks. One of the concerns for Clemson coming into this game is that they were averaging 24 turnovers a game. They only have eight right now, and South Carolina has nine. They're winning the turnover battle. But again, you gotta convert those. You gotta get points off of those South Carolina turnovers. Matty Ott. Handling the ball. Now to Douglas. Tigers need to get a shot off, they won't. Well, Saturday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern, our ACC huddle crew will be at Truist Field in Winston-Salem to get you set for another full day of football. They'll also have halftime shows, pre- and post-game shows throughout the day, and at 6, you'll get a complete wrap-up of the afternoon's games, and they'll get you set for the primetime matchup between Syracuse and Wake Forest on ACCN at 8. That's all right here on ACC Network and the ESPN app. Gamecocks on an 8-0 run. Over the last 
Clemson just one of their last nine, to your point, Kelly, about getting some looks and just not finishing them off. South Carolina, meanwhile, goes inside to 6-7 for an easy two. Well, she makes it look easy anyway. South Carolina is also getting a lot of high percentage shots. They're getting a lot of looks at layups. Clemson Moore is getting their looks from three and is only two for 12 from beyond the arc. Good hands, Cal. Glad to see you still got it. I don't think that pass was for me, but <laughs> I caught it anyway. I'm always ready to shoot. <laughs> I know you are. The South Carolina team getting ready to go on a road trip out west for a massive matchup on Sunday. We'll be at Stanford. We'll tell you a little bit more about that. Some big games coming up on the weekend in women's basketball. Tell you about that at halftime. Saxton taking the last shot of the second quarter and it goes down. Make that 10 different players now who have scored for the Gamecocks who lead it by 30. If Victoria Saxton is knocking down three-pointers, she hasn't made one all year. But, I mean, the energy, the drive of Amanda Butler, so great to see that in person at shoot around earlier today as she was just trying to remind this team of their special qualities. We talked about that in the first half, that their energy needs to be focused on what they do well. See if they can exert that a little bit more in this second half. Robinson, good look from the elbow. Great job by Amari Robinson, knowing that her teammate was attacking the rim and she filled at that elbow spot. Most of the time, you'll see a player attacking baseline and a player fills on the opposite baseline. It's harder to do that where you fill at that elbow and just make yourself available for your teammate who's attacking the rim. Seven points in the game for Robinson. Now a turnover on this end for the Gamecocks. Ruby Whitehorn, Donald's All-American for the Tigers, bringing it up the floor. No points in that first half for Whitehorn. Not South Carolina was keyed had. in on her. I think they wanted to make sure they didn't let Whitehorn get going early and get some confidence. They did a really good job on her defensively. She has Victoria Saxton trailing her around at the moment. Bradford got a little out of control going to the bucket. And it is Zaya Cook who comes away with it for the moment. Now it is back with Perpinian and Clemson. Got too deep, no foul called. It is so tough to pass the ball in the paint against South Carolina. I'd be telling my team, if you get in the lane, go score. Go score, go try to draw a foul. I'm not passing the ball post to post or guard to post in the lane with their length. I just don't want to take that risk. Tigers at least forcing the game pods down deep into the shot clock, but Aliyah Boston now in double digits with 10. She's just so strong. You can't guard her one-on-one. -on -one. Clemson tried to guard her one-on-one -on -one there. Aaliyah Boston, in her mind, she sees a one-on-one -on -one matchup. She just sees buckets. Good movement by Whitehorn for her first points. Great cut by Whitehorn. And let's see if that gets her going. Sometimes, Jen, you got to get that easy layup, see it go through the rim, and then it gets you going offensively. Any wonder, too, Big picture, right? That McDonald's All-American tag. What kind of a program-changing player Whitehorn could potentially be for this Clemson team? 20 McDonald's All-Americans have played at South Carolina under Don Staley, including Zaya Cook, one of nine on this current Gamecock roster. Jen, are you familiar with the Monstars in Space Jam? Uh, all-star team? Uh, you know what? I am sorry that I am not okay. bringing that. I'm just going to tell you they're an all-star team. Okay. They're the not beating South Carolina when they're 6-for-6 <laughs> six six from 3. The Monstars aren't beating South Carolina when they shoot the ball from 3 like this. Google I'm, them. You'll see. Okay. You'll see. They're a team of basically superheroes. Okay. I was going to say I'm guessing that's high praise. <laughs> <laughs> Cook to Fletcher on the breakout. Didn't want to take it herself. Can they go seven for seven? No, a little short. Inside it goes. Saxton nearly got it back. Instead, Robinson having to fight just to hang on does manage to keep possession of the basketball. And then passes it right to Aaliyah Boston. Fletcher again getting to the block on the break. Takes it this time. Last time she saw the Clemson Tigers was in a Georgia Tech uniform.
in the 2021 ACC Tournament quarterfinals. She had 21 points in that game, which Georgia Tech won. For Pinion, Hank waiting for it, wanting it in the corner. Both teams fighting for the ball on the floor. Foul does go against Samari Robinson, her second. Great pass by Zaya Cook to Kiara Fletcher in transition. Easy finish as the Gamecocks try to get Fletcher going. I think it's a really good sign. Fletcher subs out now as her and Raven Johnson are both still on minutes restrictions, recovering from injuries. But it's a good sign to see Fletcher playing with some confidence, playing like she did when she was an all-ACC player at Georgia Tech. A little pressure in the full court from the Tigers. Raven Johnson back out on the floor now. Fletcher's gone to the bench. Those two pretty much splitting time at that point guard spot. That's gonna be an interesting spot to watch for South Carolina this season with Destiny Henderson moving on. Oh, don't forget about Ami here. She can play oh, the point right? as well. Well, we've seen that as needed. Go ahead and bring your 6-4 point forward onto the floor. When you talk about South Carolina compared to last year, yes, every other returner who's back is a year better. I think the question mark is the point guard spot because Destiny Henderson was such a leader. She was a clutch player. She made big shots for them. So can South Carolina accomplish everything they want to with this point guard rotation? Will they have to pick one? It's going to be very interesting. It seems right now they're replacing Destiny Henderson by committee, if you will. But that could change as the year progresses. We'll have another special ACC PM tomorrow with the crew in Winston-Salem to get you set for big college football Saturday. And they'll have the latest from around the conference. That's 4 Eastern right here on ACCN and the ESPN app. There's your third point guard as needed. And me here inside to Boston. Money in the bank. Great pass by Raven Johnson. Hit Aaliyah Boston right where she needed to get that ball because the double was coming. But again, that's what Aaliyah Boston does. Sometimes she makes her moves so quickly, the double just can't even get there. Alasia Douglas back on the floor. It's going to be another fun player to watch for the Tigers this season, as is... Yuki Gaines, Elmore from the corner. That's a much needed three. Michaela Elmore has shot the ball pretty well from three for a big. She was two for three from the three coming into this game. Knocks down another one. But for South Carolina, it's all Leah Boston. She makes that move before the double can even arrive. Leah Boston showing why. She's the best player in the for the Tigers. I like what we've seen from Michaela Elmore. Has two blocks, knocking down the three, showing she can stretch the defense from that 4-5 spot. Well, we want to talk a little bit more oh, about some no. threes. Let's take it back to the Kelly Graham leg days, setting a record. This is 2013. Kelly, you might remember this. How many did you drain? I do remember this. Come on, this. how many? I think I made eight. You did. A record a at the game. time. Yeah, eight fun. in that game. I had a lot of fun in that game, I will say that. Clemson <laughs> as a team also set the record. You had eight of the 12 that they made. However, that record was recently broken against Wofford where they knocked down 14. Not been the story today, but that didn't stop us from getting a little <laughs> Kelly Graham like three-point love in the I broadcast. thought maybe something was going on. We weren't sneaky enough? I know Rick Bagby too well <laughs> back there in, in the producer room. <laughs> we tried to keep it under wraps. <laughs> Oh, nice shot fake from Ott. Well, had the perfect opportunity to get back-to-back -back triples for the Tigers. When you're Instead, known, over the back. When you're known for shooting the three, one of the most important things to have is that one dribble pull-up. And as someone who was known for shooting the three, not much else, you have to be able to have that pump fake because teams are going to close out on you so hard. They want to run you off the three-point line. And Maddie Ott, even though she missed that shot, did a great job of pump faking and sidestepping, staying behind the three-point line so she could still get all three points if she did knock it down. Eight on the shot clock. And a block from Inyang as Talasia Cooper tried to drive for the Gamecocks. Other way, and block on this end of the floor. 
Was that Raven Johnson getting in on that? I believe it was. Gotta give the... She's also played well. I think this has been perhaps the best game, besides the first game when they played ETSU, but the best game total from both of these point guards where you're getting good stuff from each of them and they both seem to be settling more into their role. They both admittedly were struggling in the last game and with a little bit of tru trouble here in the offensive half court, Don Staley has a timeout as well. We'll take a quick break. South Carolina up big in Clemson. How does the private ACCN tonight take it on Clemson? Take a look at the other teams at the ACC ranked in the top 25 at the moment. Kelly, anybody you're most looking forward to seeing on that list? There are so many teams on this list that are interesting. Every team has different storylines coming into the year. I think Virginia Tech, with the transfers they have brought in, really neither of the programs in this game bring in that many transfers. South Carolina only has two, Clemson has three. But Virginia Tech has gone out and gotten Ashley Owusu from Maryland. They got Taylor Soul from Boston College. Their starting five, just on paper, looks incredible. And they've played really well so far. So that's a team I'm excited to see how they evolve throughout the year. And me here behind the back to save the play. What a play. What a play. I think Letitia Me here is one of the more underrated players in the country. She comes off the bench. She would literally start anywhere else. She's incredibly versatile and skilled at her size at 6'4 with that 6'10 wingspan to play the point, to do that in transition. She's knocked down a three tonight. She's going to be a great pro, whether it's in the W or overseas. She's already playing with her Canadian national team. Cardozo's playing with the Brazilian national team. But it's hard. I don't think you can find a more versatile player in the country than Letitia Ami here. Well, appreciate that South Carolina shares in their game notes some of the facts and stats that we shared with you earlier in this broadcast. One of those was the wingspan. So Ami here has a 6'10 wingspan. That's the best on the team. This, this is not bad either, though, reaching out, getting a block. But she's also the fastest, Ami here, in terms of three-quarter court sprint. So yeah, that tells you a little something. You'd think it would be one of the smaller guards. I think her stride <laughs> yeah. is just hard to compete with. But again, that adds to her versatility and her all-around athleticism. She grabs that rebound. She starts the break. She goes behind the back. There, there are few players of that size that can even grab the rebound and go. And that's such a luxury to have. Cooper, freshman out of Turbeville. South Carolina, whoa, that definitely was Johnson with the block. No missing it that time by the freshman point guard. So as if the post players aren't intimidating enough for South Carolina in the paint, now you're telling me the guards are coming in and getting in on the block party? Raven Johnson has good size for a point guard. Definitely has a size advantage in this matchup against Perpignan. And that's a swat. That's not even a block. I, I would call that a swat. Call it what you want. It was impressive. Second swat of the game for Johnson as Whitehorn gets her own rebound. There, back for there's two. a glimpse, Jen. There's a glimpse of what Ruby Whitehorn, Clemson's first ever McDonald's All-American, can do. Gets a good look at three, rims out. Grabs her own rebound, follows the shot, athletic finish. Double team came in to try to stop Cardozo. And defense did its job that time down the floor for the Tigers. Bradford picked up her dribble, needs some help. That's a unique thing that South Carolina does defensively. When you drive, if you're a guard and you're attacking towards Cardozo, you're not even thinking about shooting. Against any other player, you might think about it. You might be a threat. But South Carolina knows when a guard is attacking Cardozo, we've seen this a few times with Clemson, it's not even on their radar to shoot the ball. She has that big of a presence defensively that you know that player has to pass, and then you can go full out deny every other position. Not only was Cardozo a former ACC freshman of the year at her time at Syracuse and first team selection, but also co-defensive player of the year her freshman year. Jen, when I saw on Twitter that Cardozo was transferring to South Carolina, I remember it vividly. I was driving, I pulled over and I saw this. And I said to myself, I said to myself, South Carolina will win the national championship. 
because I we saw Cardozo in the ACC. We I knew how good she was under the tutelage of Don Staley, pairing her with Leah Boston. Not gonna toot my own horn, but I literally said that to myself in my car. So I have no proof of it. But when I saw Cardozo was transferring, I thought, yeah, that's a wrap. I, I think my thought was, that just doesn't seem fair. <laughs> Seven points in the game for Cardozo. Five rebounds. Hey, ever-present defensive presence in the paint when she's been on the floor. Looks like that was Bree Hall. A little too much contact. Her first personal. So 8.5 seconds on the clock here in the third quarter. I think that was a good call. Some hand fighting there. And it looked like Bree Hall kind of threw her arm and threw Amari Robinson. Whitehorn will take the shot. But Clemson, a steep hill to climb. One quarter left to do it. Here from Little John. We did it, we did it. With more rental listings than anybody else, it was just inevitable that you were gonna find everything that you were looking for in apartments. Two, Clemson had a very good program in the 90s. It's possible that one or two of those players would have been McDonald's All-Americans, but she is the first official. I will say this, the late, great Barbara Kennedy Dixon would have definitely been a McDonald's All-American. Her jersey hangs in the rafters here in Little John Coliseum, if that game existed back then. But definitely a big pickup for Coach Butler and um, Daniel Barber, the recruiting coordinator, who Coach Butler says she believes is one of the best recruiters in the country. Now, Coach Barber first started working with Amanda Butler when he was on our scout team, the scout players at Florida. There's that jersey hanging from the rafters, and a great point you make, too, just about some of the great players who obviously did play here and preceded that McDonald's All-American honor. Her pinion curling around was open, but maybe a little deep. And out of bounds, I believe the call there before Hawk could even get the shot off. Getting a little sticky there, but South Carolina hanging on. Elmore just went between the legs of Cardoso to get down to the floor and try to win the basketball. Come on now, that's a hustle play if you're the Clemson team. I am not sure I've seen this before. Elmore crawls through Cardozo's legs to get the ball and doesn't really even, she's on the floor, yes, but she's got a lot of room left because of Cardozo's size. Love the hustle, the fight that we've seen from Clemson here in the fourth quarter. It was always going to be a stiff challenge for the Tigers tonight. They knew that. Shooting has not been consistently there for the Tigers. It's this very good defensive South Carolina team. Five on the shot clock for Pinion, bravely taking it in against Cardozo and draws the foul, gets to the free throw line. South Carolina's bigs generally do a really good job of defending without fouling. The Gamecocks have only been called for nine fouls tonight. But that time, her pinion was able to get Cardozo to lean into her, get that contact. And so that was a, a good call by the official. First trip to the free throw line tonight for the Tigers, by the way. Well, our next All Access, the ACC Live premieres on Sunday, features Virginia women's soccer, Louisville volleyball, and Syracuse men's soccer. You'll get unprecedented access into the lives of the student athletes, coaches, staff, parents, and fans at 7 p.m. Eastern right here on ACCN and the ESPN app. Those all access shows are always so great and you get a chance both Virginia and Syracuse, their women's and men's soccer programs respectively, both of those teams in the NCAA tournament at the moment.
going to the basket, and it is good, is Hall. She had just one free throw in the first half. Bree Hall is a young player on this team that comes off the bench, but is just oozing with talent. And Perpignan gets on help side. She's where she's supposed to be. But Bree Hall literally just flies over her. You're, you're where you're supposed to be, but South Carolina has that ability to still make plays when you feel like you've done what you're supposed to do defensively. And make no mistake, when you talk about Clemson just wanting to break this game into these final 10 minutes and say, we need to win these 10, well, South Carolina wants to do it too, even if they have some of their key players, like their player of the year, Leah Boston, sitting on the bench, cheering on those players who came in for her, like Hall, try to win these final 10 minutes. Well, and think about this too with South Carolina. You have that second team on the floor, Raven Johnson, depending on, on who's starting, maybe isn't second team. But every one of these players, because they have all these stars, they're trying to earn more minutes. So this is the situation where in these final eight minutes, You've got players that would start basically anywhere else who are trying to earn more minutes. There's very little letdown for South Carolina when they go to their bench. I asked Don Staley about how she manages really all the talent that, that comes her way and you know, if there's any sort of having to massage some egos, players who are used to getting 20 points per game and spending every minute on the floor. And she said, no. I just remind them of why they came here, and it's to win a national championship. That has to come first, whatever your role may be. <laughs> Got to applaud the effort there from Douglas, but even better effort. And you saw some of the hops there from Watkins now. Hall on this end. Ashlyn Watkins, though, not only was she a McDonald's All-American for South Carolina, she won the dunk contest. You know she's got some hops, the freshman out of Columbia. The third woman ever to win the dunk contest, joining Candace Parker and Fran Belibi, who is still currently playing for Stanford. So you'll see two of those women matching up in that South Carolina Stanford game. And the Gamecocks went right to Watkins. They're on the inbounds. And Yang committing the foul for Clemson. But Jen, to your point about these players coming to South Carolina and knowing what they're getting into, they want to win a national title. No one, I mean, Aaliyah Boston is a generational talent, so was um, Asia Wilson. They are going to be, they're going to be the centers of attention, but I think these players come and they want to be a part of that. They're buying into that. And to me, that's one of the great things that I love about women's hoops. You don't see that as much anymore in the men's game. You see a lot of players who want to come and want to get to the NBA. Of course, these players want to go to the WNBA, play professionally, play overseas. But I think their main goal in coming to South Carolina is to win a national title first. And that's something that we have that's different in the women's game that I personally love about this game. I'm guessing the South Carolina team has not given you many reasons to doubt that they can defend that national title, right? From what you've seen so far this season? No, not at this point. I think you can look at that Maryland game as well. Maryland was without Diamond Miller and they're kind of rebuilding through the portal, but they dominated Maryland. I think the Stanford game is going to be a great test. But like I said earlier, if South Carolina shoots the three like this, because that, that was their main weakness last year and they were able to overcome it with how they did everything else so well. But if they shoot the three, obviously they're not going to shoot 64% each night. But if they can get that up into the mid-30s, I just don't know how you guard this team. Because then you have to almost reconsider doubling Aaliyah Boston. And that's crazy. You have to double Aaliyah Boston. So they're just so hard to guard at every, every spot on the floor. Beautiful passing on the interior there. Cardozo Watkins having herself a fourth quarter. Six points in the quarter for the freshman. Interesting that Raven Johnson just reached for her knee brace and told Don Staley she needed a break. So they're putting Kira Fletcher in. That, that's the other question mark with this South Carolina team is that point guard spot. And we mentioned that earlier. Just the consistency you're going to get from both these players who are both great players in their own right, but their, their main issue right now is they're both coming back from injuries. Yeah, you can tell that Johnson really laboring out there. She's behind the play. You hope it's just something with the mechanism of the brace itself and not the knee underneath it, but she will come to the bench. Also, 
Cardozo checking out right now. Not sure if we'll see her again. Finishing with seven points and six rebounds. It's so interesting with Cardozo because if you had asked me before I looked at this box score, I would have said Cardozo had 12 and nine, but she has six and seven. Her impact is so much more than when she scores or when she rebounds because when she's on the floor defensively, every player, when they attack the paint, you have to think about her. She's on your mind and she makes you play differently with her size. Now the handle getting away from Hall that time. Whitehorn pulls up. Sonia Fagan in there defensively for South Carolina. Robinson puts her head down, goes up against Fagan. Whitehorn keeps it alive. And now Amari Robinson finally is fouled. Well, Clemson fans, we've got some well wishes you're going to want to send out to this Clemson staff. We'll tell you all about that when we come back. Clemson assistant coach Joy Smith, only Joy Cheek, pregnant due in December. And this is the fifth baby to come the way of this Clemson staff. You saw Amanda Butler. She and her wife Jenna adopted their second son, Lincoln, in 2020. Joy had her first daughter, Harley, in 2020. Daniel Barber, assistant coach, had his daughter, Maya. And we're not going to forget sports information director Chandler Simpson, who also had her son, Charlie, in September of 2021. So, yeah, we're giving, we're shouting out all the babies on the Clemson staff. Lots of babies that have arrived over the last couple of years on the Clemson staff. And viewers, you're welcome. Jen Hildreth fought so hard for that baby graphic, and I'm glad she did, because who doesn't love babies? Well, not only that, but appreciate the parents, the moms and dads who are caring for them and doing a great job on Amanda Butler's staff, balancing parenthood and coaching. Not always easy, and this will be the last game potentially for Joy. She will not be joining the team on their trip to St. Thomas. And Joy Smith, formerly Joy Cheek, great player at Duke in the 2000s. Well, tough one tonight, no doubt, for the Clemson team. And you would imagine their biggest challenge at this point, Kelly, is just not to let this linger on, right? I mean, one of the things that Amanda Butler talked about was their energy in this game. Look, South Carolina is going to do some things. They're going to get offensive rebounds. They're going to score in the paint. She may not have anticipated the scorching three-point shooting that they've had tonight, but they knew they were going to have to weather the storm somewhat. She said, we can't hang our heads. Not in this game, and then not going forward either. You can't let a loss beat you twice. And Clemson is going to that tournament in St. Thomas, U.S. Virgin Islands. They're going to play Kansas State, a team that made the NCAA tournament last year. They're going to play Arkansas, a team that also made the NCAA tournament last year. So this is a, a tough stretch for them with South Carolina, K-State, and Arkansas. And they have to find a way to learn from this game but move on. I, I do think they've done some good things defensively. And I think they've gotten some good shots offensively. But you got to convert. The name of the game, as simple as this sounds, is putting the ball in the basket, making shots. And Clemson has to find a way to convert on more of those opportunities. Meanwhile, for South Carolina, Bree Hall and Ashlyn Watkins, two players have combined for all 11 of the Gamecocks points so far this quarter. Foul on Cooper getting a chance to see her handle the ball a little bit. Three-time South Carolina State Player of the Year, 2021 South Carolina Gatorade Player of the Year. There's a lot of Gatorade being consumed as well as McDonald's in terms of the honors. That's all you need. Down that South Carolina roster. A good hands as Watkins takes it on the break and puts it down. We told you she was a dunk champion. How about that for a little extra fireworks? And Jen, that was contested. There was a defender there as Ashlyn Watkins threw that down. You could hear the crowd start to get excited. She threw that down with ease, Jen Hildreth. Oh my goodness. Play it again, play it again. We need to see that. South Carolina wants to see that. 
Come on, even Clemson fans want to see that again. Just incredible. Most of the time, Jim, when you see a dunk in the women's game, it is completely uncontested. She did this against a defender. This was a contested dunk in transition. Whitehorn was there, and she throws it down. Dare I say with ease? You know she was thinking about it, right? She's on the break, she got the steal. Right about there, she's thinking, oh yeah, I'm doing it. That was not difficult for her. <laughs> That was easy. I can't imagine if she had just a wide open lane, no one was around her. Wow, what, what a, an exclamation point for South Carolina in this game. Ashlyn Watkins, who I think is a future superstar in women's hoops and a future superstar for South Carolina, comes off the bench, of course, because they have all these players that come off the bench and just throws down a dunk. <laughs> Unreal. See, people? Stick around. You still watching this game? You just got rewarded with a little something special you don't see every day. She just had the block there, too, on Ruby Whitehorn. This has been her quarter, really. I'm shook, Jen. That was right in front of us on our side of the floor, and she just made it look so easy. That was unreal. Cooper has it blocked by Whitehorn. Probably did not appreciate being the defender in the She did kind of get out of her way. When she I did. saw the replay, I realized uh -oh. she didn't contest it as much as I thought she did. Fagan now on the break, and good hustle back. Bradford not allowing an easy two in transition. Well, that's going to be on SportsCenter Top 10. It better be number one. We're calling it. That should be number one. Ashlyn Watkins serving notice for South Carolina. Eight points in this quarter for Watkins, 12 in the game. Jen, and I'm confirming this with South Carolina's SID, with all the great players that South Carolina has had, that is the first time a Gamecock has dunked in a game. So history here for South Carolina. First ever Lady Gamecock to dunk a basketball. Ashlyn Watkins. And just to add a little extra spice to the moment, of course, doing it on the floor of their in-state rivals. Never hurts. He's not. If you're Ashlyn Watkins Carolina also from anymore. South Carolina, yeah, that's so true. They know well there's that aspect do. as well. Cardinal Newman High School won four straight state championships there in Columbia. Well, we had this graphic ready to go earlier for you, but now we're just backing it up a little bit. A couple of freshmen you might want to keep your eyes on as the season goes along. Definitely. Both top 15 recruits. And Ashlyn Watkins making a statement in this game. Whitehorn has had her moments as well. And Ashlyn Watkins is just one of nine McDonald's All-Americans on this South Carolina roster. Basically, if you aren't a McDonald's All-American, you are an outlier. We've got a technical foul, it looks like, on the Clemson bench. And if that doesn't tell you a little something about the fight in this Clemson team and how it starts from the top and their coaching staff. The score 76-29, there's two minutes to go. And the Clemson bench with the technical foul putting Watkins on the free throw line. Dunks and makes her free throws. You love to see both of that for Ashlyn Watkins. So something must have been said right there. Safe Esho right in front of the Clemson bench turned right over there and did not hesitate pointing and calling the technical foul. You can't speak to the refs from the bench in that kind of manner. Not quite sure what was said, not sure who it was. Don't want to speculate on that, but Sounds like it was enough for the, the ref to tee, tee Clemson up. Watkins. Good 
fight under the basket by Sanaya Fagan, trying to make the most of her moments. And with Ashlyn Watkins, too, this is just another point about this Carolina program and what makes it so different. Sanaya Fagan's also an example of this. Ashlyn Watkins could have gone anywhere in the country and would be starting right now and would probably be getting 12 to 14 shots a game. She went to South Carolina knowing that Aaliyah Boston is there, the National Player of the Year, at least for one year because Boston does have a COVID year. We'll see what she decides to do. For one year, she's going to come off the bench, and she was okay with that. It was worth it for her to go to South Carolina to play for this coaching staff, to play for national titles, and to not necessarily start when she's one of the best freshmen in the country. I think that says everything about South Carolina's program. Meanwhile, on that last play, Eno Yang did commit her fifth personal foul. She fouled out. Kiki Gaines came on the floor in her place for Clemson. Just over a minute to go in this one. And Fagan, now she's feeling it for South Carolina. Seven points in the game, all of them coming this quarter. One minute remaining. Whitehorn read the defense well that time. Got a little bit of a cushion to get her shot off. Six points in the game for the Tigers heralded freshman. And not a lot of points for anybody in a Clemson uniform. It's been tough going on both ends of the floor for the Tigers, taking on the defending national champs tonight. Clemson all about just picking your head up, moving on after this, seeing what you can learn from going head to head with number one. You think South Carolina feels good? We'll see, they're headed out to the West Coast for a big game. Stanford on the road, one versus two on Sunday on ABC. But coming up next here on ACCN, Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. They're 2-0 on the season, taking on Northern Illinois out of the MAC. Yellow Jackets coming off a two-point win on the road at Georgia State. Happy to be back at McCamish Pavilion. See if the Jackets can bounce back after a tough season for them last year on the men's side. And the year before that, ACC Tournament Champions. Getting whiplash over there and hoping they can whip it back around yes. towards the top this time. Couple of missed free throws here by Kiki Gaines. Oh, for three. That kind of a night for Clemson. Final seconds coming off the clock. A dominant performance by the defending national champions. One that was highlighted with the first ever dunk in South Carolina women's basketball history by their 6'3 freshman from Columbia, Ashlyn Watkins. We're going to take a quick break, but we will come back and talk to Ashlyn, get her thoughts on...